This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey everyone, Nico here. This is part two in my series on capturing the analemma. The analemma is the path that the sun takes through the sky if you photograph it from the same location at the same time every day throughout a year. The bad news is my initial plan has failed completely and I am starting over. But the good news is I think my new plan is much better and has already been a lot of fun to work on. And we'll get into it in this video. And if you didn't see part one, let me explain that this series is um, not my traditional tutorials where I'm gonna be really testing my methods carefully before sharing them to make sure they work. Uh, instead, this series is a little bit more off the cuff and exploring all my trial and error <laughs> as I attempt to capture the analemma over the course of a year or more. And I welcome your advice. Uh, the first video, I got tons of great advice. Uh, it was about planning in Stellarium and uh, I found out that Stellarium actually has a scripting feature in the Ephemeris tab that allows one to plot the whole analemma in the sky, which is much easier than the way I was doing it. So keep up the helpful comments because I'm going to need them uh, for a project like this one. So let's start with what my first plan was and why I realized it just wouldn't work. My first plan was to install this tripod in my yard here, and then whenever I wanted to take a picture for my analemma project, I would go out into the yard, attach the camera to this fixed tripod, and take the photo. And what I liked about this plan is it seemed very simple. I didn't have to tie up a camera for the whole year. I could use it for other things. But my idea for how to avoid the image shifting issue was to stake the tripod to the ground. Well, here in New Hampshire, we get a pretty serious winter, which is why you see signs everywhere warning you about frost heaves, and buildings need serious foundations that go below the frost line, and even then, they still can shift over time. So, I'm not sure why I thought I could get this lightweight tripod to stay perfectly stable all year on just the ground, even with stakes, but I did pursue this idea for a while, trying to make it work, um, and I just gave up. I was too frustrated with all the snow, the frozen ground, so the tripod idea is dead. <laughs> now, I do plan to put in some concrete piers in the yard this summer and build an observatory around them. So, one idea I had was I could just put in an extra pier just for the Analemma project. And with a pier, you avoid the shifting ground issue because you dig out a huge deep hole, you fill it with concrete, and that makes this really solid base for the pier to go on. Um, but, I didn't quite like that idea because it would mean using a pier just for this project, because I wouldn't want to be taking the camera off and on and all that. So um, I then started thinking, is there some place within my house where I could per permanently set up the camera like in a windowsill and capture the whole thing from indoors? And unfortunately, there was no such window that had the right view. But then I realized this side of my house does have a good view for the analemma. So I made a very simple mount from scrap wood that I had lying around so I could attach the camera to the side of the house securely. And here it is. And this was a very good proof of concept and it actually works just fine. Um, but then I realized I have another problem. I don't actually want to take the photo, the camera in and out of the house every day at 11 a.m. or noon during daylight time. Um, because the more that I thought about it, I was like, you know, I'm pretty forgetful. I have meetings. I have travel. I'm probably going to miss lots of potential days to capture the sun. And on the one hand, that might be fine because with an analemma, you don't need to actually capture the sun every day. As long as you can get like 20 to 30 days throughout the year, um, with hopefully at least a couple days in every month, then you're going to be able to see clearly the shape of the analemma in your final photo. Uh, there's space, of course, for all the cloudy days and th days where you just couldn't capture the sun. But on the other hand, I realized for me personally, I think I'm going to have a much higher chance of success with this if I automate the taking of the photos. So my first idea was to use an intervalometer. This is basically just a little trigger with a clock in it that can tell the camera take one picture every day. But the main issue with this was, I'm not sure if an intervalometer like this is gonna be accurate enough to take a photo every 24 hours down to like the seconds level. Cause if you're off by even like 30 seconds, the position of the sun is wrong and I'm sort of a perfectionist. So, uh, and then another thing is this runs on batteries. I'd rather run everything off AC. So I kept thinking, 
And when I was looking through all my junk, I found this old Raspberry Pi 3, which is a tiny little uh, single board computer, it runs Linux. And for Linux, there's a program called GPhoto 2, where you can automate the taking of your photos with a camera connected to your computer. And then the computer can pull down accurate time from the internet. So I think this is gonna work, but I do need power uh, to both the Raspberry Pi, power for the DSLR, uh, that's not going to be a problem because there's an AC outlet there. I do want everything mounted outside here, and I want to leave it there all year, protected from the elements. So I need to build some kind of enclosure for this. And at this point, you might think I'm nuts because <laughs> this is really uh, getting more and more complex. And one of my goals was to keep it simple. Um, so... But I think that in the end, I think all this added level of complexity is going to be worth it. Um, I'm still finalizing how I want the enclosure to work because I want to protect all this stuff from the elements, but it also needs to open up so I can make adjustments or change out a cable if something goes wrong. Um, so I'm still thinking that all through. If you have some ideas about an enclosure for this, let me know. We're probably just going to use scrap wood, but who knows. Let me just close this video with a rundown of the equipment that I've settled on for this project. In the front of the lens, we have a handmade solar filter. This is made from Bader Astro Solar Film and cardboard and tape. And this is what I use to make all of my white light solar filters. It's inexpensive. It works great. With a lens this wide, you actually can shoot without a filter. So why am I using one? Well, if you shoot the sun directly without a filter, you have to stop down. It looks like this from the diffraction pattern. If you shoot it with the solar filter, you just get this perfect white disc of the sun and everything else goes black, which is actually exactly what we want for an analemma because then we can take all of those photos, composite them together with one unfiltered photo of the scene and then we have our final year-long exposure. Now, one thing I haven't decided on with the filter is if I'll use this one that I've already made for the lens, or once I make the enclosure, if I'm gonna use some kind of bigger front filter here. For the lens, I am using a Rokinon 24 millimeter f1.4. It's a manual lens. I think I'll just be able to set focus once and leave it for the whole project. For the camera, I am using a stock Canon 5D Mark II which is a pretty old camera that doesn't have video, so I got a very good deal on it uh, used. The camera is not super important, but I think that for the lenses that I wanted to use, or the lens I did want to use, this Rokinon 24, I wanted full frame. If you were using a crop sensor, you would need a wider lens to capture the analemma, like 12 or 14 millimeters. Okay, in terms of accessories, I have a dummy battery here for the Canon DSLR, uh, so it can run off an outlet. I have, I'm going to have a USB cable going from the camera to this, which is the Raspberry Pi Model 3. You really can do this with any small computer, uh, you know, that can run a program to act as a trigger for your camera. Um, and that's it. I'm, I'm still not quite underway, but I'm getting very close here. And again, I welcome all comments, critiques, suggestions. I think my next video in the series is going to be an update on the enclosure idea and hopefully first light with this project. Uh, before I go, I want to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for designing and hosting a beautiful website or portfolio. I've been uh, using it for nicocarver.com for a little while now, and it's been great. I was shocked by how fast I could put something together with their professional templates. I just chose one I thought looked good, dropped in my photos into different categories that I got to pick, of course, and Squarespace handled the rest. Everything, that, you know, when I was designing this website was a what you see is what you get tool. So it's truly a real-time preview with no coding necessary. And I think this would be a great choice if you want to have a nice professional uh, space of your own to share your astrophotography with your own domain name. So if you're interested, head over to squarespace.com slash nebula photos to start your free trial. And if you like it, you can get 10% off your first purchase with the code nebula photos.